Good day all. Today we are going to learn about vaccines and this type. Message to Tuganga. So after the corona virus outbreak has occurred, the vaccine become very important part of our life. Why this vaccine become so important? Because uh, for an infection like that, uh, infection like coronavirus, a pandemic like coronavirus needs to be controlled. So vaccine was the, was the only choice for for this particular reasons, because it will it will have the ability to enhance our or give us immunity against the particular organisms. How it is possible that we are going to deal with our next sessions, next uh, classes. So, uh, what is important of this particular vaccines? They are, they can save our life and they are safe and they protect our loved ones. We all know we lost many people for in the many eminent people and many loved ones of ours because of this coronavirus pandemic. So we need to protect our people and they are very much essential. These vaccines are very much essential. And moreover, they are very safe because we all know like soon after the pandemic outbreak, the, there are a lot of claims have come that we have developed many all over the world. People started saying that many uh, companies started saying that we developed vaccine, we developed vaccine, but none of the vaccine came into picture because they were under the trial whether it can be used as safe, whether it is safe for human conception or not. So that was the uh, uh, first thing that everybody were concerned about, whether it is safe or not. So now the vaccination, what is a vaccination? It's an administration of an antigenic material uh, to stimulate individual immune su system to develop active immunity against a particular pathogen. So it can prevent us from morbidity. So it is protect our, our ourselves from death against a particular infection. So when going to the introduction, they are agents, vaccines are biological agents or biological preparation that improves our immune system against a particular disease. So it contains, what does it contains? It contains agents which is similar to that of the real microorganisms, real natural microorganisms. Though it is not a, the real microorganisms, it is having the capacity to stimulate or evoke an immune reaction in our body. So it can be either the killed form of that particular microbe or the toxin which is produced by the particular microbes or certain surface protein which is produced or present on the particular microbe. So now the recent COVAX vaccine, they are saying that the, the, mm, the corona spike protein has taken place and it was inserted into some vector viruses and that is uh, we are getting the vaccine out of that spike protein which is expressed on some other viruses it is i think it is some african uh, monkey virus so this agent stimulate our immune system to recognize it as foreign and uh, once it is the agent recognize the particular, uh, uh, they, once it is considered, once our body recognize it as foreign antigen, our body started remembering it and started killing when the real virus comes in the picture. So there was us every, uh, the product, biological product, which is available in the, uh, the pharmaceuticals, it, it was having some, some history. So vaccines also having some history while it was developing. Our, it was done by a, a great scientist called Edward Jenner. So this is Edward Jenner. He was a surgeon, he was a real surgeon. While he was working on a diary farm and when we was very much worried about the outbreak of smallpox. And during the, the outbreak of smallpox, he could able to find that there are few people 
like called diary workers, those who are working in the farm, diary farms, they're having mild infection of smallpox. They don't have the high infectivity of smallpox. Only a group of people, only those who are working in this particular diary. So uh, Jennifer experimentally tested his observation to prove whether, and he also observed that those people, this uh, small group of people were not uh, having much infection with the smallpox, were having, they had already had infection with cowpox virus. So he assumed that, that due to his, their cowpox infection they already had, they got some, some immune boost up in their body so that when the next time when the smallpox virus came into their body, they were not having infection. They were not showing infection against smallpox. There was some reason behind it. So he wanted to test it in an experimental manner so that he inoculated an eight-year-old boy with an X days of cowpox lesions and repeated it many two times and after some weeks. So he repeated that with a booster dose. Jenny, uh, later the Edward Jenner noticed that the cowpox, the smallpox did not develop in this body. Though the person who has uh, taken the injection of the cowpox lesions, uh, the, the, uh, the cowpox virus was not infected with the smallpox virus later. That was the first discovery of the principle of vaccination and the creditors go to Edward Jenner. So the word, the vacca, vacca means cow. So this vaccine word was originated from that. So the vaccines are of mainly two prophylactic and therapeutic, prophylactic and there are therapeutic applications. So as I said, the vaccine is a biological preparation that improves our immunity against a particular disease. Vaccine typically contains agent that resembles the disease causing microorganisms. So it mimics uh, the particular microorganisms, but it is not the true microorganisms. This agent is, will stimulate our body's immune system and recognize the similar agent as foreign and it will destroy it or a keep record on it. It can immediately destroy that particular agent or else we can keep a record of the particular agent so that when the second type, the real virus come into picture, so immediately the antibody, since this agent has evoked an immune response in our body, uh, the, our immune system is already flooded with antibody so that uh, and other immune mechanism so that once the virus comes in or, or once the pathogen, real pathogen get into our body, it will try to, our body try to eliminate the particular microorganism because it is already got the uh, immune boost up due to the injection of the particular foreign so-called antigen or foreign vaccine. So this is termed as vaccine or vaccination or derived from uh, the smallpox of the cow that is called a variola vaccine. So the term was devised by Edward Jenner to denote cowpox. So it was the variola vaccine. He was the uh, person who gave the terminology of vaccine. So there are seven major types. So there are major types of vaccine, different types of vaccine. But today we are going to deal with the, the seven major types of vaccine. That is that they are at present. Uh, these are the major types which exist that is left leaf attenuated vaccine, inactivated vaccines, subunit vaccines, toxoid vaccines, conjugate vaccine, DNA vaccine, and recombinant vector vaccines. These are the major type of vaccines. First, we are going to deal with the leaf attenuated vaccines. Leaf attenuated vaccines containing a version of leaf microbe that has been weakened in the lab so that it can cause disease. So they live virus they have taken and it, it was tried to weaken the particular virus. The, the, the virulence of the virus was reduced so that it can act as only as an immunogen. 
so because a live attenuated vaccine is the closest thing to natural infection so it will mimic the natural infection and this vaccines are good teachers of our immune system so it will educate our immune system as a natural uh, infection or natural microbe so that when never a real microbe get into that is a uh, that is the virulent virus get into our body so that the immune mechanism will try to take that out so my two examples are vaccine against measles mumps and chickenpox second one is inactivated vaccines so scientists produce inactivated vaccine by knowing the disease causing microbes with chemical heat or irradiation so what they have done is they have taken the virus and treated with any pathogen not only the virus any pathogen they have taken the virus Uh, pathogen and they treated that with the certain chemicals such as heat radiation etc so such vaccines are more stable and safer than the live vaccines the, uh, there is some defect in the live vaccines at times they will act as they will re back regain back their immunogenicity or not immunogenicity their virulency and they can act as a natural virus but here the inactivated virus means it is not only it is totally inactive it can cannot revert back its activity so because here we are using the dead microbes than the live virus the, the, the other way around it was taken as the live virus so the dead microbes can mutate back to their disease causing state examples are vaccine against influenza polio hepatitis and rabies next is subunit vaccines instead of entire microbe as i said the corona virus it is having spike protein so instead of taking the entire microbes we can use the subunit vaccine or a part by part the protein by protein we can take and include those antigen that best stimulate our immune system in some cases this vaccine use epitopes of the specific part of the antigen so they take and they use the epitope that i we already learned about the epitope portion because epitopes are uh, the the surface antigenic or surface determinants of that uh, particular antigen so only that peptide portion that ep epitopes will be taken out that specific the part of antigen and antibodies or t cell recognize and bind immediately with that but epitopes so, so that is the idea behind it so subunit vaccine contain only the essential antigen so the entire antigen won't be there or entire micro won't be there only the essential part which is required for the development as a vaccine is taken out and uh, that molecule so that is no, not the entire microbe is not taken into consideration example is plague immunization immunization vaccines next is toxoid so there are some bacteria Uh, can able to produce toxins so this toxins are very much harmful to our body that can even lead to our death so bacteria not all bacteria will produce back toxins those bacteria which is having the ability to secrete toxins uh, or harmful chemicals a toxoid vaccine might be the the best answer for that these vaccines are used when bacterial toxin in the main cause of illness so uh, the scientists have found that they can inactivate those toxins so those the organism which is have produced those toxin can be inactivated and those toxins which is inactivated or detoxify those toxins we call it as toxoid so detoxified toxins are called toxoid this toxins can be used can be used as vaccine because they are safe because the toxin we know there are lot of toxin neurotoxic uh, and uh, 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 those kind of toxins can take our death so that leads to death so uh, the toxins are the detoxified toxins that is inactivated toxins we call it as toxoid that can be used as a safe vaccine prol protralex atroxoid toxin is used to vaccinate dog against a rattlesnake bite and the rabies toxin against rabies toxin also there is uh, uh, 
and there are some toxoid viruses has been previously used and there are tetanus toxoid can be utilized so there are many type of toxoid vaccines next is conjugate vaccine if a bacterium possesses an outer coating or sugar molecule called polysaccharide as many harmful bacteria do the researchers may try to make conjugate vaccine for it so uh, here in conjugate vaccine polysaccharide containing disguise as bacterium's antigen so that it immature so that immature immune systems of infants and younger children can recognize or respond to them so conjugate vaccines are the polysaccharide coating so we take the polysaccharide coating of the particular bacteria and that can be uh, added as a vaccine so it can be vac uh, added along with the the antigens as vaccine and they can be used this is, especially this conjugate vaccines are safer for the young and infants and young children Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine is an example of that. Next is DNA back based vaccines. DNA vaccines is a technique used for protecting our an organism uh, that is against a disease by injecting with genetically engineered DNA. So we can uh, use this vaccine. DNA can be directly you, we can take a syringe and the DNA can be directly injected against a disease. so we can, we will get an immunological response against this disease circular double stranded dna molecule referred to as plasmid fabricated with the dna sequence containing genes encoding one or more proteins of a pathogen so we have circular double stranded dna molecule they are referred to as plasmid fabricated with the dna sequences containing genes encoding one or more proteins of pathogen as dna is inserted into cell it translated in the form of antigenic protein so when the dna go and bind in our body it will translated into uh, that antigenic protein as the protein is formed to our body so that the immune system will evoke immediately against that the last one is the recombinant vaccine the recombinant vector vaccines are experimental vaccines similar to dna vaccines so as i said now the corona virus vaccine which is available it is a recombinant vaccine the spike protein of the corona virus is have taken only the only the spike protein has taken and it is recombined with the the african monkey viruses and now we are using that so the recombinant vector vaccines they are use attenuated virus or bacterium to introduce microbial dna into cells of our body so there will be a microbial dna or vector microbial vector can be used uh, for this recombinant vaccine for the production of this recombinant vaccine so example is dpt or diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine is a, a example of a recombinant vaccine and before winding the session we have to know what is a vaccine adjuvant vaccine adjuvant is a substance that is added to vaccine to increase the body immune response to vaccine so anything any attached substances which can furthermore in, uh, in in enhance or uh, uh, increase our body immune response we call we call it as adjuvant of the vaccines saponins are the natural glycoside or steroid or a uh, triterpene which exhibited many type of biological and pharmacological activities uh, and saponins are uh, one which can also activate our mammalian immune system so these are the topic of today and uh, so vaccine adjuvants are something uh, which is attached with vaccine to enhance the further activity of the vaccines so what all we have studied today is what is an vaccine and what are the types of vaccine and what are what is an adjuvant what is how to enhance the immune uh, immune response against a vaccine that is by adding a adjuvant so that's for today thank you